Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joyofbaking.com. Today we're going to make Easter cookies and this is what they look like. This cookie has really nice crisp edges, yet inside they're soft and chewy. They're flavored with ground cinnamon and then they have lots of raisins and candied mixed peel. So, the first thing you will need to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 180 degrees Celsius. And then you will need a uh, baking sheet. I've lined mine with parchment paper, but you could either just lightly butter it or spray it with one of those nonstick sprays. So for our batter, if you have an electric stand mixer like I have here, use your paddle attachment. You could use a hand mixer or really for this uh, batter, you could just mix it by hand with a wooden spoon. The first thing you will need is a half a cup, 113 grams of butter. I'm using unsalted here and have your butter at room temperature. And I'm just going to beat it until it's nice and smooth. Okay. And whenever you're making any kind of batter, make sure, you know, fairly often you scrape down the sides and the bottom of your bowl to make sure everything gets mixed together. So our next ingredient is a half a cup, that's 100 grams of granulated white sugar. And then I'm just going to beat these together on medium high speed. I want to mix everything together and get a little bit of air, so maybe a couple minutes. Okay, so next this. So next we're going to add for flavoring a half a teaspoon, that's two grams of pure vanilla extract, and then one large egg yolk, and have your egg yolk at room temperature. Now you want to separate your eggs before you start and put your yolk in one bowl and then your white in another because we will be using our egg white. So just I'm just going to beat that in. That's good. So now for our dry ingredients, in a separate bowl I have two cups, which is 260 grams of all-purpose flour. You may know that as plain flour. To that I'm going to add just a quarter of a teaspoon, one gram of salt. But if you used salted butter, I would just leave this salt out. And then for flavoring, I'm just adding a half a teaspoon, one gram of ground cinnamon. Just you know, it's not a real strong cinnamon flavor, just a little, but I, can, I really like it in these cookies. So I'm just going to whisk this all together. You could sift it. And then we are, I'm just going to toss, I got a, a quarter of a cup, 40 grams of candied mixed peel. And this is, uh, now I, I kind of, I really like the flavor of candied mixed peel. It's kind of chewy, which I really like, and sweet. Now, if you didn't want to use candy mix peel, you can't find it, you could just add a little more raisins or, you know, some kind of other dried fruit, because I'm going to add a third of a cup, which is about 50 grams. I'm using dark raisins. You could use golden raisins. Now, like I said, or currants. If you don't want to use raisins, or you could also use like maybe some dried uh, cherries or cranberries would be very nice. So, you know, you can kind of vary it up. And I'm just going to toss this, because normally with these, especially the raisins, they can kind of stick together. So if you toss them in the uh, flour first, kind of get them separated. So your hands get all covered in flour. So I'm just going to add all this and slowly beat it in. You don't want that coming up into your face. Okay, so it's not quite coming together. So what I'm going to do is add somewhere between two and three tablespoons of milk. I'm going to put two in and see how this comes together because we're going to roll this out. So I just wanted like consistency to be able to do that. Yeah, I'm just going to check it. I think I'm going to add maybe like half, just a little more. 
see how that is. Okay, so that's coming together. You want it to come together, feel kind of like soft. See how it holds together? That's what you're looking for. We didn't add any baking powder, you may have noticed, because we don't want a lot of rise to these cookies because we're going to cut them out into shapes and we want them to stay in the shape. So now we're going to roll it out. Now you could just flour your counter and then roll it out that way. So, but I'm going to actually have two pieces of parchment paper. You could use wax paper. And that way I don't have to add any more flour to my dough. Because then, if, you know, sometimes when you roll out on a counter and you add a lot of flour, that can make your cookies a little tough. So if you do it like between parchment or wax paper or even plastic wrap, you're not adding any more flour is a good thing. So now what we're going to do is going to make it a little faster to roll out. I'm going to and we're going to roll it to about a quarter of an inch thick which is a little over a half a centimeter. So let's put that on top. Take my rolling pin and then I'm just going to put a little bit of water sticks. That way your parchment paper doesn't slide around, especially if you have granite or marble counters that can really slide. Okay. okay, so that looks good. When you're rolling, if you notice the paper's creasing, just kind of peel it back as you're rolling and you can even like flip it over if you want to check the underside. And then, and two, uh, there's a, is it the same thickness all over? Which it, it tends to be thicker in the center when you're rolling. So it, just rub your hand over it and you can kind of tell if it's the same thickness. And then of course you could, if you don't know exactly what a quarter of an inch, you can just kind of use your ruler on the side there just to double check. So now, um, any cookie cutter you want to use, I'm using an egg because it's Easter. You could use bunnies or and then we're just pressing down and then just space them, you know, a couple inches apart. And our last one. And then I can just gather up my scraps and re-roll them. You get about 24. Um, this is about, I think, about three inches, which is seven and a half centimeter cookies. Of course, you can make them larger, smaller, whatever size. So now we have our leftover egg whites. So I'm just going to whisk that because we're going to brush the tops of our cookies with the uh, egg white. And that's going to give it the uh, tops of cookies nice and, it'll be nice and shiny. Okay. So we'll just take a pastry brush and just brush the tops. Okay, there we go. And then just a little finishing touch, give a little sparkle. I am going to just sprinkle a little bit sparkling this just sparkling white sugar you could just use granulated white sugar if you want or you don't even have to do this adds a little if you use the sparkling sugar or like a coarse sugar it adds a little bit of crunch okay so now now everyone's oven is a little different I find between 13 and 15 minutes the more you bake these, the more crisp they will be. But what I do is I bake them to the outside is like a golden brown and even under, under the underside will be a golden brown and there'll be a lighter brown in the center. So somewhere between 13 and 15 minutes. I do rotate my baking sheet halfway through baking time because that gives you more even baking.
Okay, so our Easter cookies are done. See, they're golden brown around the edges. And, well, I'll show you later what underside. So what I've done is put the uh, my baking sheet on a wire rack. I'm going to let them cool like a couple minutes on, in the pan, and then I'll just use my um, spatula to transfer them to the wire rack to finish cooling. And when we come back, we will try one. So, as you can see, the bottom nicely browned as well. So, let's try some. It's a really flavorful cookie. You have the outside edges, nice and crisp and crunchy. And then I like the, the sparkling sugar on top. It gives a little bit of a crunch. And I'm very soft and chewy inside. Lots of flavor. Yeah, I like the a little bit of ground cinnamon. It's not overpowering. And then the chewiness of the raisins and the uh, candied mix peel. Really nice cookie for Easter because, you know, you have a lot of chocolate and all that sort of thing. <laughs> and then this cookie, not too sweet. Lots of flavor. you got to try it. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.